Hey, Sage. Hey, Danny. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. <laughs> Welcome well, back, guys. <laughs> well, that's not Did my thing. I'm so say, sorry. Excuse me. That's my thing. I'm so sorry. It's very forward of me. <laughs> yeah, that was honestly kind of aggressive, <laughs> and I'm a little bit hurt. <laughs> Um, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. I've never done that before. I don't, I'm no. so sorry. She's forgetting her place. I know. <laughs> it's okay. I'll forgive you this time Thank because you. it is Christmas-ish time and I'm in the spirit of forgiving. Wahoo. Yeah. Um, so how are you? I mean, you kind of already asked that, but like, how are you actually? (laughs) How are you for real? What's Um, the real Danny like? What's she doing? What's her? Well, I'm not so great right now because no one knows who we are. Oh, I was like, (laughs) wow, that's really. (laughs) That's upsetting. (laughs) No one knows. Okay, (laughs) who are we, Danny? Who are we? We're your hags of Science of, Science of the, the Hags. hags. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you doing now that everyone knows who we are? Now I'm great. I'm great. Good, good, good. Um, so, guys, how how do you like our last episode? Yeah, Coral. No. Oh. <laughs> Buzzfeed. <laughs> Buzzfeed. Salty snacks and bursting. Salty snacks like and it? bursting. What was your go-to? Was it the salty snack or was it the bursting? Shit, but I feel like they go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. oh my god. Um you guys said you wanted to get to know what's did. Better. You if any you, you have asked any complaints, this. you asked for this. Yes. My dad hasn't listened to it oh, yet. Oh god, Steve. Oh, he probably I'm... has by now though. Okay, by now, Steve. I would like to take a moment to apologize for <laughs> everything that came out <laughs> over <both> our mouths. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. <laughs> I feel Look. remorseful and he's not even my father. <laughs> <laughs> you should hear the shit that comes out of his mouth. I mean, maybe not about bursting, but just in general. Is your, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to ask a question like, and then <laughs> I just... I don't want to know, actually. <laughs> yeah, honestly, fair. Um, honest, I'm going to be real, though. I think that might be like in my top in my top episodes for us first off merry early christmas everybody merry early christmas um ma- very merry un christmas can i say that yeah um when that. this comes out it's the 21st so christmas is in ooh, four days God, three sleeps wow that's so exciting um holy shit this year went by fast or well not the whole year first half of the year slow snails yes. seven years long Second half of the year, fucking seconds. Speed, <laughs> speed. Snails speed. versus speed. Spiders. <laughs> oh yes, um, spiders. Um, cheetah. Uh, lion? Are lions fast? Zebra. Zebras are fast. Yeah. Gazelles. Ooh, that's a good there one. Go. Gazelles. Gazelles. V. Um, sloths. S- snake. Um, water. Uh, <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> We're so dumb. Oh, my, I um, have to segue into the dumb shit. Um, I we don't need one. Oh God, I've never <laughs> <laughs> been so. I've been so embarrassed. That's a lie. Um, I just don't <laughs> think I've ever done something so dumb and like saw that the message was read and was like, "Fuck, I can't even unsend the message." So <laughs> I sent what my friend a do? meme. Okay. And it said it was like a guy who was high and he was like, "Why does?" W, start with a D. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Whatever. So then he said, <laughs> "So he, I'm going to read you what I thought he said." He says, "What starts with the d- <laughs> what starts with the D and ends with a U." That's not what he said, but that's what I read, and I couldn't think of anything that started with a D and ended with a U. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I said, "Danica U," because <laughs> I <laughs> couldn't think of anything. And Danica then I was like, and then I saw that he Danica read the message, and then I read his message properly, and he said. W starts with a D and ends with a U, and then I was like, "Oh no, you're gonna be the fuck are you talking about?" Oh my so god! I was like, "Yeah, I thought it was a riddle. Like that's what I thought it was. I was like, oh, I'm solving a riddle.' <laughs> so my I, name. So I was trying to solve the riddle, and I was like, I don't get it. I was like, also, we've never done this before. We like, we we usually stick to memes, or we yeah, we don't transitioning talk. to riddles. Like, what's going on? 
I don't understand. He probably read that and was like, this bitch is so high. No I'm wonder not. she sent me this shit. I'm literally not. Um, well, isn't, isn't it? I heard that a W is called a W because it's two U's. Double U. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's actually why it's called a W, but that's what I heard. Well, that would make sense. Right? I mean, it's two... Well, but it's technically two Vs. It's not two Us. I mean, I guess it depends on how you write. Bubble Voo. Bubble Voo. Bubble Voo. Or double V, because what it would be. (laughs) You fucking idiot. (laughs) This is exactly what I'm talking about. (laughs) Welcome back to dumb shit. I promise I'm like not actually like a ditz. She actually is really smart. I'm quite just smart. But sometimes, like, I just can't. Smart. I just can't. Smarting is hard. It's funny I because, like, I feel like I'm smart with, like, smart people things. But, like, not really. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You think you're smart with smart people things? <laughs> like, I think yeah. you're smart with, like, things that most people aren't smart with. like Such as? I'm going to, okay, this is a poor example because of the way I talk. English. <laughs> but I'm like, I swear to you, like, writing English, I'm really good at. Like, I, when we did our, our provincial exams, um, I was the only person who got 100% on the essay in my grade at my school. Okay. Um, so, eat my I'm, I feel personally <laughs> victimized by your English mark. <laughs> on the essay part, not on the whole thing. I am not but very, I would say I'm not that great. I'd say I'm like, I'm like smart at writing, but like some things no, that are like, me. like just really simple. Like mm-hmm. I just can't wrap my mind around. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's like, I, I literally don't know. It's the mental illness in me, but like, I like really taking over your life. Big things I'm fine with small things that like should just make sense to people. Like don't make sense to me. Like the other day I, <laughs> Nico laughed at me and like, it was like a genuine question. But I was like trying to, I was like laying in bed and I was like, why does like breast milk go bad outside of the breast, but not in the breast? <laughs> <laughs> why? He couldn't explain it to me, but like still like. That's a good question. Thank you. It's like, I, I understand. I understand that it doesn't and I accept that it mm-hmm. doesn't. And I know intuitively why it doesn't, but yeah. I don't know why it doesn't. I was having this conversation with Jade the other day, too. I was like, why, in the is, body? why is traffic? Just go. I don't get it. Why are we all stopped? Just go. I know why traffic happens. Explain it to me, please. Okay. <laughs> are we talking about highway traffic? Any kind of traffic. Okay, no, but there's But why are we, like, stopped? If there's no accident, like, rush hour. On a, on a highway. Sure, maybe. Anywhere. Okay, because... Because person at the front of the line, okay, has to press brake, er, stop, um, doesn't stop, slows down, er, slows down, okay? Person behind them, oh shit, a second too late, er, stops, a little bit slower, holds for longer. The person behind them, oh shit, I have to put on my brakes too, er, stop, a little slower, a little longer. And then suddenly everyone stopped forever. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you understood <laughs> See, I just need it, like, really dumbed down to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I think we already established in our last episode that I am the dits of, of the of this duo here. So if <laughs> you need dits. something dumbed down, yeah. let me know. I feel like I'm, I'm, like, smart, but, like, I just need things, like, I need to know why. Otherwise, I won't yeah. understand something. I can't I just accept say, that things are things. I can't just I, well, accept I that breast milk doesn't expire inside of you. I don't understand. <laughs> I can't accept well, it. Well, I I'm, I'm that way, too, with, like, food. Like, um, if you eat fucking, I don't know, yogurt, and then you drink a lemonade ten minutes later, Ooh. first of all, gross. Second of all, why doesn't that shit curdle in your stomach? And then why don't you have curdled milk in your tongue? Because your what? stomach acid probably breaks it down too fast. Well, maybe you have breast Or maybe it acid. does curdle. Ooh. Ooh. Never thought about maybe that. Maybe that's why you have the shits. Maybe. Maybe this last two years, I have just had constant curdled milk in my tongue. <laughs> Probably not, because I was, like, solely Do drinking you often, oat milk. Like, eat yogurt and then drink some lemonade? <laughs> Just that. It's my favorite lunchtime <laughs> snack. Okay. 
Oh, oh my right. god. Can't, can't deny so, you of that. Thank you. I really appreciate the support in this matter. What else happened at lunchtime today? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm to we're this. actually doing it. Okay. Oh, I thought um, we were! Oh, I was joking because that oh. was a... I thought that you would not be into it, but I'm down. Oh, Let's okay. tell it. Okay, so guys. We're talking about me being asked out on a date, right? Oh, I was talking about you getting dumped. <laughs> oh, I got dumped, everybody! <laughs> I want my breakup to be this lighthearted when, oh my God. when it happens. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> okay, well, we weren't... Okay. Here's where I'm at. He was very respectful. <laughs> I'm say, glad he wasn't like, you. I'm dumping you because you're a dumb, fat, ditzy bitch. That's and I why. said, I know, but you don't <laughs> have to tell me. No. So he... T- Okay, this didn't happen at lunch. This wasn't today. Oh, I thought it was today. No, no, no. Could you imagine if all of this thing, all of these things happened today? No, it happened on the same day that um, my boss said that they watched um, a customer complaint happen on camera with me, even though I wasn't in the store when that actually happened. So it happened on that day. Um, more on that later. I probably won't expose that because I do want a promotion. Um, but... Yeah, no, I got dumped, everybody. It's okay. Do you hear the lighthearted tone in my voice? Does it sound like I care? You're fine. (laughs) I'm so fine. Point is, be respectful when you dump people. Yeah. I was going to dump him anyways. I mean, and also, dumping is such a strong word. We weren't, he wasn't my boyfriend. We were seeing each other. But he found someone apparently cooler than me. And, I mean, have you listened to my podcast? <laughs> Impossible. Clearly he hasn't. Although he has listened to the podcast. and Maybe you know, since he listened to the bursting episode, he'll come back. Oh, honestly, hopefully. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> um... He, you you want to hear his feedback for our podcast? Maybe I don't. Well, maybe no, I, do. I don't think you do. Oh, tell me. Okay, he said he liked it. Mm-hmm. He said it was funny. He said he did not like the theme music. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, dead fuck ass. Off. No, dead ass. I was like, I was like, do you have any? Like, he's like, yeah. Did you tell him like, that oh. you composed it yourself? I did. I said, do you have any constructive feedback? And he's like, mm, honestly, don't really like the song. And I was like, oh, I made it. And he's like, don't like it. Oh, I was like, okay. <laughs> cool sounds good i just need some good dick that's just really it's been like please please god someone please that's what i want for christmas (laughs) santa come down that chimney (laughs) (laughs) oh god okay speaking of santa (laughs) speaking of santa um but there is no coming and no chimney in this story so Good. Get that out of your mind. Well, maybe not good, actually. Oh. I forgot we're probably be a about better murder. <laughs> probably be better if there was. Oh. Um, but maybe we'll link you some good some good websites for that kind of Oh my god, sorry. I just had the I, I just had like a vivid memory of something mm-hmm. related to this. Nico, what was that movie where the, like, the movie started and it was like immediately someone dressed as a turkey getting fucked, but it was a horror movie. Oh, I don't remember the name Damn of this movie. Damn it, Nico, you're I letting think down was, our viewers. Was it Thanks Killing? Okay, so there was this movie, and it was called Thanks Killing, and it was, we were, it was like, around Christmas, and we were, like, I think it was me, Jade, and Nico, or me, Courtney, and Nico, and we were all, like, yeah, like, what, it, it's a Christmas slash movie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's watch Can't it. Can't go wrong. The first opening scene is somebody in the forest dressed as a turkey, and like, they're, like, 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 like funny funny yeah, turkey like, yeah okay. like in like one of those like like where you're it's like a bodysuit and your head's out you know like you're yeah, just your yeah. face and you've got the hat thing on yeah so it was like one of those and he had like a big tail and everything and this woman is buck ass naked and they're fucking on oh, a tree geez. that is the opening scene oh my god yeah immediately turned it off i was like no this is not Honestly, I, good for them uh don't know what the movie was about but it started off just immediate hardcore porn <laughs> That was I, not not what not me, cute. my boyfriend, and my best friend, who is like extremely Christian, I was say, were hoping for from the movie. Friend. Yeah, <laughs> not not really what we were. It's a no. For, but 
Yeah, if well, you wanna. I might watch it just because a horror slasher porno movie. Thanks, killing. I'll give you a detailed review next. There week. might not be porn throughout the whole movie, so don't they get just, your hopes up. But that they just want to grab you. They went hard on the. Yeah. Fu- they. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> yeah, they really did. All right. Sorry. We're. It's just, <laughs> we're gonna rein it in. This has been the most off-topic intro we've ever done. You're welcome, everybody. It's, it's Christmas for us too. <laughs> um. So today we're gonna we're gonna sober up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to be talking about a fellow by the name of Bruce Jeffrey Pardo. Um, he is nicknamed the Killer Santa, Shanter, the Killer Santa of Covina. So, <clears throat> Bruce Jeffrey Pardo was a 45-year-old man who, on December 24th, 2008, knocked on the door of the family home of his ex-wife during a holiday party and dressed in a Santa suit, open-fired into the home with a semi-automatic handgun, killing nine of the 25 people inside the house after setting it on fire. Holy shit. Merry fucking Christmas. What the hell? Mm-hmm. Bruce. Bruce. This It's not good. Um, Brucey was born March 23rd, 1963... He's an Aries. Um, in the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles, California. Um, he graduated from John H. Polytechnic High School and studied computer science at California State Northridge. He was described by his teachers as a bright young man, and he graduated and quickly got a job as a software engineer for Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Um, you might, you might have heard of it, also known as fucking NASA. <laughs> oh, shit, so he was a fucking smart guy. Yeah, he was smart. Um, so the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is a unique national research facility that carries out robotic space and earth science missions. Um, so, yeah, literally a rocket scientist. So, congrats, I guess, Bruce. Still a piece of shit. Um, however, despite all of this, our boy Bruce was definitely not known as a good employee. So just because you're smart doesn't mean you're good at your job. Um, he was often found hacking into company systems to access private personnel info, specifically looking at wages and tax info of his fellow employees. Um, also... He hacked into NASA. That's insane. <laughs> he's like, he's really smart. Um, which you won't get in the rest of this story. It's like, full stop. Is he smart? I don't know. Um, so in 1988, at the age of 25, Bruce got engaged to a fellow employee. Oh. A woman named uh, Delia. Oh. Brucey, still living at home with his mama, was not the most financially stable fellow. Um, the Delia agreed to pay for their reception and their honeymoon. Shit. Yeah. Good for you, Delia. Damn, yeah. Strong, independent lady. Um, however, their love was not to be. Bruce, a true gem from the start, left her at the altar. Are you Yeah. What the fuck? He withdrew $3,000 from their joint account and decided to take a solo trip instead. After she paid for everything. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Asshole. Uh, I'm sorry, so he, also, didn't he work at NASA? Yeah. How was he broke? I don't know. I don't know. This was a hard one because it was really, like, a lot of media attention, but mostly just on the actual situation. I only found a few other sites that actually gave me, like, background story. So, it was a little difficult to find. That's okay. Um, but, yeah, so, needless to say, this ended their romance. Yeah, I fucking hope so. Yeah. What a dick. I, yeah, honestly. I'm actually she literally, baffled. Like, he was living at home with his mom, and Delia, this boss-ass, you know, money-making, hustling lady, was like, you know what? I don't even care. Her first mistake. Um, y- I love you. I want to get married to you. I'll pay for the reception, and I'll pay for our honeymoon. And then, not only did he leave her at the altar, not only did he do that, but he withdrew three grand from their joint bank account and fucked off on his own. He took a trip. Like, awful. So 13 years later, in 2001, Brucey Boy got himself into another sticky situation. 
Um, although this one, I would say, was definitely more serious than leaving his lover at the altar. Um, at 38 years of age, he was living with his then-girlfriend, Eleanor, and their one-year-old child, Matthew. One day, Ellie was out and about while Bruce was babysitting, and during that time, um, Bruce was basically just watching TV, um, and their child allegedly fell headfirst into a pool, oh my an God. empty pool, um, and suffered from some pretty traumatic injuries. Yeah. Um, after a one-week stay at a hospital in L.A., Matthew was diagnosed with permanent brain damage and paraplegia. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. After this, Bruce really stepped up and became the ma the father that Matthew deserved, uh, and not the father who let his one-year-old wander and fall into a swimming pool. Sorry, Joking. what year was this? Oh, um, 2001. Oh my god. Yeah, this is recent. So this wasn't even like the 70s when it was acceptable to not take no, care of your kids. Oh no, my god. 2001. Bruce, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Um, also, just kidding, he did not do any of that, he just left. <laughs> He was there in the hospital with his kid for a week, and as soon as he was, like, diagnosed, he left and never saw his child again. I... I want to kill him. Yeah, he's awful. He's awful. He, like, he's fuck? really bad. Um, and Eleanor raised their boy alone. Good job, Eleanor. You strong yeah. woman. Strong lady. Fuck you, Bruce. Yeah, honestly. Bruce God. is awful. What the hell, man? Why... Yeah. Who hurt you? Yeah, his, and his mom and his dad were, like, normal. What the fuck? And, like, his mom was like, I don't know how my son could do this. Like, it's really sad. Um, so, a few, a few years later, in 2004, Bruce was introduced to his future wife, Sylvia. Um, she was Sylvia. all... Sylvia fucking... Honestly, this is really sad. Please oh, run. No. We can't go back in time, but... She was already a mother of three... And only one year younger than our 41-year-old POS. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they hit it off right away. And after a fairly uneventful, if happy, two years of dating, um, the couple were married on January 29th. Bruce Arino bought a house in Montrose, um, and the couple were well-known in the church community where he often volunteered as an usher. Um, however, as is often the case, behind closed doors, things were not so peachy keen. No. Um, the couple were financially struggling, and Brucey, being a paragon of integrity, had been claiming his abandoned child as a dependent on his taxes in order to get tax breaks. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. No. Well, no, I'm not. Um, I hate him. Yeah. So not only was this news to Sylvia, but the fact that he had a child at all also came as a surprise. Sylvia filed for divorce in April 2008, um, only 15 months after they were married, and Bruce did not take this particularly well. Um, in June of the same year, after slumping into a deep depression, he purchased a handgun. Oh, no. A few days later, on the 18th, a, at a divorce court, it was decided that he would pay just under $2,000 a month in spousal support. Um, however, his first check bounced, and he never made any payments after that. Oh, no. Yeah. Bruce, fuck you, man. Yeah. The next month, he was fired from NASA. Um, Good. So, need I remind you guys, this mofo is still working for NASA. Okay? Yeah, how um, are you so broke? I, I don't, like... <laughs> I don't get it. I'm not even that broke, and I don't fucking work at NASA. Yeah, right? Um, well, he was fired from NASA for billing fraudulent hours. <laughs> um, Maybe he wasn't working at NASA. <laughs> Yeah, honestly. Maybe he was just on leave the he's whole just time. Saying, he's just saying he worked there. Um, but, yeah, so he was billing fraudulent hours, which, if you don't know what that means, um, he was saying that he was working, like, longer hours than he actually was. So maybe he got there at 8 and left at 4. He'd say he got there at 7 and left at, like, 6. So he'd get paid for hours that he wasn't there. Um, and because he got fired, he did not qualify for unemployment. Um, not, yeah. honestly, not a good time for him, even if he literally did it all to himself. Um, over the next two months, Bruch, Bruch, <laughs> Bruce purchased two more handguns. Um, next he ordered a custom-made Santa suit from a friend. Uh, he paid a deposit and promised to pay off the rest of the outfit at a later date. 
In October, he poured, he, Jesus, can I speak? Are you okay? In October, he purchased a fourth handgun. Um, later that month, Bruce got a call from an old friend named Steve Irwin. No relationship. Okay, I was going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, no relationship to the Crocodile Dundee. Um, and Steve invited him back to Iowa for his birthday. Bruce accepted. While on his little vacay, he confided in Steve about how angry and humiliated he had felt having all of his business out in open court. Um, and for everyone knowing that he was fired. <laughs> for everybody knowing that you're a piece of shit? Yeah. Wah, wah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so... Everyone knew his financial history. Bruce was pissed. Um, after he returned home in November, he paid off his Santa suit and purchased a fifth handgun. Additionally, he scrounged up an air compressor, a 50-foot hose, and a tank of fuel. Um, on December 18th, Bruce's divorce from Sylvia was finalized. He agreed to letting her keep the engagement ring. Um, paying her 10k outright, and she even won custody of their dog. Oh, so, hey. I was like, not gonna lie, she took him to the cleaners, uh, which he deserved. So, don't you gotta keep the engagement ring regardless? Because technically, it's a gift. Um, I think that it might be case by case. I think oh. it depends on how amicable the divorce is. I could be wrong. I have never been divorced. Me neither. So, who knows? Um, on December nineteenth. He bought a plane ticket back to Iowa, um, and then he waited. Iowa being, of course, where his friend Steve lives. So, sorry, I have to turn off my heater. It's getting okay. real toasty on my legs. Um, okay, so Bruce rented a blue Dodge Caliber at approximately 11.30 p.m. Um, oh, sorry. Skip to uh, the 24th. Of December. Sorry, I forgot to say that. Okay. Um, so, on the 24th of December, Bruce rented a Blue Dodge Caliber. At approximately 11.30 p.m., Bruce, dressed in a Santa Claus suit, knocked on the door of his former in-law's house, occupied with about 25 people, with a gift wrap package, um, which contained a homemade flamethrower that he had made from the um, air compressor, the fuel, and the hose. Jesus. So he held that in one hand, and he held a semi-automatic handgun in the other hand. He also had three additional semi-automatic handguns in his possession. When the door opened, Pardo fired the handgun at an eight-year-old girl as she ran to greet him. What the fuck? Remembering that he was dressed as fucking Santa Claus. Um, injuring her in the face. She was his ex-wife's younger sister. He then fired indiscriminately at fleeing, at fleeing partygoers, and the police speculate that Pardo may have stood over and pointedly executed some of the victims using the other handguns. What the fuck? After the shootings, Pardo unwrapped the package containing the homemade flamethrower and used it to spray racing fuel gasoline um, to set the home ablaze. Nine people died from either gunfire or flames, and three others were wounded. The eight-year-old girl who was shot in the face... Um, had severe but non-life-threatening injuries. A 16-year-old girl was shot and wounded in the back, and a 20, uh, 20-year-old woman suffered a broken ankle jumping out of the second floor window. There was one survivor who called authorities during the attack after escaping to a neighbor's house. The resulting fire soared approximately 40 to 50 feet, and it took 80 firefighters and an hour and a half to, dis to extinguish. Due to the intensity of the fire, identification of the victims had to be done through dental and medical records. After the attack, Pardo put on his street clothes and drove his Dodge to his brother's house in Silmar, which is approximately 30 miles away from the crime scene, where he was later found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. His brother was not present in the home at the time of Pardo's death. Police believe he had planned to commit these awful awful fucking crimes and then hop on the plane he purchased tickets for and hide out until the situation calmed down uh for someone who literally worked at nasa is that really the best you could fucking do yeah um however during the fire 
he had suffered some severe third degree burns on his arms um, because he was wearing his Santa suit, which a lot, a lot of plastic is in those fabrics. Um, and so basically the Santa suit melted all over his body and uh, gave him third degree burns. Yeah, honestly. Um, so because of suffering these burns, um, he decided to go against his initial plan of hopping on a plane um, and decided to take his life instead. The police found $17,000 in, uh, in cash cling wrapped on his leg inside a girdle. Um, so I guess we know what he was doing with all his money. Um, and his rental car that had been parked one block from his brother's house um, had been rigged with um, another small bomb that would detonate the car if removed. So also recovered from the scene were four 13-round capacity handguns that were empty and at least 200 rounds of ammunition. Um, so suggesting that what had been inside of the car was being treated as a threat, a bomb squad fired an incendiary device into it, destroying and burning it. So they brought in the bomb squad, and they were very sketched out by his car, which I think is fair considering he literally made a homemade thro flamethrower and set in a home on fire. Um, so the police treated it really cautiously, detonated it themselves, and then kind of got, got all the evidence they could from that. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, from Bruce's house, they recovered five empty boxes for semi-automatic handguns, two additional shotguns, and a container for high-octane uh, fuel tank gasoline. So, being the racing gas, which is a lot more intense than the gas that just goes into your car. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. So, the names of the deceased were, or are, Sylvia Ortega Pardo, who was, of course, his ex-wife, um, Alicia Ortega, which is Sylvia's mom, Joseph, Joseph Ortega, which is Sylvia's dad, Charles Ortega, which is Sylvia's brother, Sherry Ortega, Charles's wife, James Ortega, Sylvia's other brother, Teresa Ortega, James's wife, Alicia Ortega Ortiz, which was Sylvia's sister, and Michael Ortiz, which is Alicia's son. What the fuck? I hate. Yeah. Straight white men. Honestly, awful. Like, where was this? L.A.? Yeah. California? Yeah, in 2008. What the? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just uh, go to therapy. Yeah. Like, the fuck? go you, to therapy, Bruce. What the fuck? For why? Literally. Like, li because for once somebody left you? Yeah. After, like, after you did all of those awful things yeah. to your previous partner, you after you, like, for real, goddamn just neglected your son and he ended up paraplegic and you just left. So someone leaves you for that reason, for a good reason, because your past caught up with you. Yeah. And you just kill their entire family. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. Literally Bruce. why? I don't understand. I just like, like, is it like? I mean, I, it it's obvious what it is. It's just like a power move. Yeah. Like it's like a power thing because yeah. this was the first time where he didn't have like full control and he wasn't Over able the to. Yeah. To the situation didn't go the way he wanted it to, so he was pissed. Totally. Fuck you, Bruce. That's yeah. awful. Yeah, I know. I had a really hard time doing this one um, because I mean. Murders, as I've discovered, are really hard to research and write about and talk about. Um, but this one was just really, I think what really got me was that poor little girl. Yeah. You know, you open the door and you see fucking Santa Claus and you go run to say hi to Santa Claus. And Ugh. he pulls out a gun and he shoots you in the face. Yeah, literally like so traumatizing. Yeah, like, I mean, thank God she lived. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, you, you're never... That whole family I, probably hated Christmas after that. Yeah. They like never fucking celebrated Christmas again. Well, yeah. I mean, nine like of them died. Them. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. It's really true. Like, so I don't, like, serial murder is bad. 
I'm not saying it's not bad. But there's something for me about, like, mass shootings yeah. that fuck me up so much more. Really? Yeah. That's like, I just think it's so, they're so, like, to me, that's, like, something, like, that I find, like, really hard to, like, listen well, to. I and, just like, feel like it's just, about. it's a temper tantrum. Yeah. I, I, like, I guess that's what it is. Like, it's, like, like, I feel like, okay, I think, I, I think I've just deducted it myself here. Ooh. So, Lay I think the me. thing with serial murder is that it's like a mental illness and it's something they feel the need to do and it, it's not something that they can control you know it's not okay you know what i mean like they have these impulses okay. and they feel like they have to do them you know okay. but yeah. i feel like mass murder it's not like they've had this impulse to just kill people mm-hmm. so it's more of like i feel like I'm not going to say anyone, but I feel like it's more probable that people would commit, like, a mass shooting than it is that they would become, like, a serial murderer. Well, mass shootings are fucking stupid common. Yeah. Well, no, like, no and that, that's why I think it fucks me up more, because yeah. it's not, like, it, well, it takes a certain kind of person to be a serial killer. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like, it yeah. takes a certain kind of person to be a serial killer, yeah. but it takes one, like, not even necessarily mentally ill person, just, like, somebody to, like... Just like get an extreme s- narcissist. Yeah, an extreme fucking narcissist. Like, yeah. somebody who's been, like, harassed and bullied their whole life. Like, it just, you can push, like, just the fact that you can push, like, just a regular person to that point. Mm-hmm. Like, that, for, I don't know, I just think But, but the thing is, that. I don't think you can. Like, that's not a normal, I mean, I, I guess, from my perspective, I'm pretty lucky. Yeah. I've had a, pr- I had a pretty great high school experience. You know, kids were pretty nice to me. I was pretty nice to kids, you know. I wouldn't say I was, like, you know, like, the queen of the school. But, like, I don't know. I had lots of friends. Like, yeah. I had a solid experience. But I don't think you can just put, like, that's, to me, it's just, like, you are such an extreme narcissist that it's, like, mm, these kids were mean to me. So yeah. I'm going to literally shoot and kill them all. Yeah. Like, uh, are you fucking joking? Yeah. Like, that's not a normal response. That's someone who thinks that the entire world revolves around them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think, not, I, I guess it's not, like, anybody, but I feel like it's more probable that you can, like, th- okay, I hear, okay, this well, is where I, I'm I at. Agree. So I it's feel like very, serial yeah. murder, you don't get pushed into serial murder, you know? Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, uh, like, no, like, Dahmer wasn't, like, his dad wasn't, like, Com- like bullying him and he's like I'm gonna murder everyone you know like it like it's not something where it's like a build up until you feel like a lot of the times it's just you've had that feeling you just have to do it and like it's I'm not saying it's okay and it's not like but you know what I mean like I feel like the amount of serial killers and serial murderers or people who have urges to do that mm-hmm. are, is way lower yeah yeah so that's what I'm well, saying it's, where it's like, a different it's a different thing because I would say like with with the mass shooter it's like it's like a you snap yeah, so that, but that's what I'm saying. Like that, I think that's why it upsets me and freaks me out so much more. Yeah, because it's like the amount of people that have either been on the verge and have snapped. Like, look how many fucking mass shootings there have like have been just even in these past five yeah. years. I think more of the story is just don't hang out with weird white boys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dead ass though. I I mean, when was the last time there was a school shooting that wasn't done by a weird white boy? Yes. I don't think they happen. No. You guys can correct me on that. <laughs> I've never heard of one. That I want to mean see it's the never stats. happened. I, I but want to see the stats. If it's yeah. anything over 70% of them being weird white boys, then you're we not need convincing me otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> like. um, but yeah, no, definitely. I think because, like, I think with the serial killer, it's definitely, like, I think that that's where there's the really big lead up and the build up. Yeah. And, you know, you're planning it and, you know, you, you end up, maybe you don't choose your victim profile, but, you know, different things in your life happen to the point where you choose people who look like your mom because your mom did this to you. Yeah. And then this happened and, and you start with just, you know, maybe, I don't know, choking your girlfriend during sex and then you're like, oh, this is great. And then, you know, you, you move on until, until, you know, you choke her to the point where she passes out and then she flips out the next day and then suddenly you're choking people to death and that's what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Whereas with a mass shooter, it literally, I mean, this guy, he was in divorce court with her yeah. a week before. It's just an impulse. It's, it's, it's just an, like. It's like a one-time yeah. impulse and half the time they kill themselves right after. Yeah. So it's like, it's Although, not even like they're getting like the, the satisfaction, you know? Yeah. 
I would say, though, this one's an interesting one, too, though, because he bought that fucking Santa suit yeah. months ahead of time. Yeah, that was fucked up. So, I mean, there was some interesting shit on Reddit. I mean, Reddit, of course. Oh, I know, but, like, everyone said he was a really nice guy before oh, he did that. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, literally. Oh, fuck off. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like, and, you know, his He handicapped his child and then yeah. left the family and took money from another family. And she took all of his money and he had no way to pay the alimony. <laughs> Boo hoo, didn't he do the fucking same? I was like, honestly, Reddit, don't get me wrong, I think is great in a lot of ways. And I do go on Reddit a lot for stuff like that. Um, I don't usually use it as a source because of shit like that. Yeah. But I just, you know, I find it interesting. And sometimes you can find like crazy pictures or stories that, you know, you would have a hard time finding other places. Mm-hmm. But leave it to Reddit to just fucking I know. like. Defend the yeah, actual, like. Yeah killer yeah for real yeah, no one needs so. to defend them except their lawyers but like <laughs> and even them even I mean, them like, I, I mean if somebody if like deserves counsel but yeah i mean i don't know if deserve it everyone's entitled to that yeah That's that was I, my thing like because i did want to be a lawyer for like quite a while yeah. and like that was my thing is it wasn't even like a matter of like like it being a really hard job and everything it was a matter of like i genuinely do not think that i could fight for or defend something that i don't agree with like there's literally no physical fucking way i could do it (laughs) like i'd be like i'd rather die i mean i don't i don't really like lawyers i've had some lawyer well i mean i have what's the word i have secondhand lawyer Mm -hmm. experience that i don't love Mm -hmm. and i disagree with a lot (laughs) yeah about that but I just, I think it's crazy that someone can actually, I mean, in this case, of course, he's, he killed himself, so yeah. he had no lawyer. But, I mean, there was someone who fucking defended Ramirez. Ramirez. Manson. Manson. All those people. I was going to say, in. like. I, I just yeah, don't, how do you do that like, when are you there's so, me? when there's, like, such concrete, solid evidence? Like, how, how, like. I literally be like I how, fucking like, like, give up. How do you up. sleep at night? Yeah, I, I don't. And like it, you Especially know, it's one if thing they, if they you know. d- if it's like a relief, it's like okay, phew, they like they they got life or whatever. But like, could you imagine if you actually got them like yeah. you got them off and no got charges? Yeah. Like what the f- like I literally be like like I there's people hate there myself. there are lawyers who make their living mm-hmm. and that's how they advertise it. It's like I don't give a fuck what you've done. I will get you off. Yeah, I hate. That. And I don't get that. I mean, I guess it's just people who love money. Yeah. Which, I mean, I love money, oh. but not that not much. Not that fucking much. No. What the hell do you need that much money for? You don't. If you have money, like, what's his name, Jordan Belford or whatever in Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> you have too much money. Yes. <laughs> Surprise. Just, like, what could you, like, possibly want or need? Like, that's my thing. What could you well, want? What could you isn't need? Isn't there a study that it's, like, there's a certain threshold that you you sh- like that when you make that's your optimal like you feel the happiest you feel the most comfortable and then after that any higher you just kind of get more miserable isn't that yeah what I, I can't remember and it's not it's like high enough but it's just like enough that you can be comfortable and you're not stressing about yeah you know living paycheck to paycheck and you know if you have been working for an entire year you can take that one week mm-hmm. vacation you don't have to worry about it you know? well and like the other thing like at least that i noticed like i mean for the longest time i always was like i hate work i hate working i hate it i like i don't want to work i mm-hmm. hate working i want to stay sense. at home and like do my own thing um and uh-huh. then covid happened yeah i don't want to fucking do that because i was going yeah. stir crazy like I, <laughs> I i genuinely was like yeah i'm actually like kind of thankful to have a job and be well, working like I, I like I guess be working like as frequently as I do. Yeah, I think too though a good thing to be able to distinguish is like being thankful for a job and also hating the the work environment. Oh, of course. Oh yeah, I hate the work environment. Don't right. get me wrong. Well, and I don't even mean like I don't even mean like your specific yeah. work environment. I mean like just work culture. Yeah. Um, and about how we're literally in the middle of a global pandemic and i i mean i don't know (laughs) i'm not gonna speak for you but i don't feel like i can call in sick to work right now oh no absolutely not right like it's just it just it's such a work comes first over absolutely yeah and to me it's so funny because like i i mean i think that this deep-rooted fear of calling in sick Mm -hmm. i'm gonna fucking chalk that up to sephora because like genuinely 
I was, I, rem- I called in sick to work at Sephora once. And it was like, I, I was actually genuinely sick. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. I called in more than once, but like I was genuinely sick. And like, mm-hmm. it was like, they literally said no. They were like, no. And I was like, like, I'm not coming in. I don't understand. Like, if I come in, I'm going to get literally everybody else sick. Mm-hmm. I Like, I don't. And then, like. Who said no? I don't even remember who it was. Well, and then even the other time where I was, like, literally sick at work. And, oh, like, yeah, I, never, really I never UTI. asked for help. I never, like. Yeah. I, like, I will. Like, I'm the person. Like, I no matter how sick I am, I will push through. True. And yeah. work because, like, I feel like I have to. But, like. It's it, almost annoying to me sometimes because I'm like, Danny, you are so obviously <laughs> not well. <laughs> Like, I don't know why customers want my help. I'm, like, literally hacking up a fucking lung, yeah. and I look like shit. My makeup's, yeah. like, pouring off my face because I'm, like, sweating. That has like, happened, fine. guys, where her makeup <laughs> is literally melting off of her face. And she's like, <laughs> yeah, I can color match. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, like, and I was, like, genuinely sick, and I was like, I don't go to the doctor. But, like, I was like, I need to leave, and I need to go to the doctor. And they said no. See, that's interesting. I disagree for myself. I feel like I had less of an issue calling in sick to Sephora than anyone else, anywhere really? else, because I felt like it was the most understanding there. Really? Because um, so, like sometimes they, like, for me at least, sometimes they'd, like, give you a little, a little guilt trip, but I never once was it said no. Was See, I guess, no okay, I guess it depended. It, for me, it was dependent on the person. Sometimes it, if yeah. I was calling in sick, I would literally call a certain person to answer and be like, oh, <gasps> Me too, me sick. too. I did and that I too. Because I'd be like, they're, they're just going to, like, give me shit and they're going to be really. And no, that's the other totally thing for true. me, like, because, like, I, I do, I mean, I'm, I th- I think we've, I'm sure we've talked about this. I do suffer from mm-hmm. anxiety. I've suffered from anxiety yes. since I was like five years old. Mm-hmm. But like, <laughs> for me, like, to then be sick and I'm like already like I already, I n- I always feel bad when I call in sick. But mm-hmm. I don't feel bad for the management. Don't I don't feel bad for them. I feel bad for the staff because yeah, I yeah. know that me calling in sick, either somebody else has to come in for me or mm-hmm. it's just gonna be tight and they're gonna have to work really hard. And that like I don't like that. I don't like yeah. I, I like I like doing my job and mm-hmm. my I feel like my job is to make other people's job easier. That's totally. how I feel at a lot of my mm-hmm. jobs and like so calling in sick like I already feel so awful when I call in sick and then mm-hmm. to come into work and be like guilt tripped mm-hmm. and made to feel like when I'm back and I'm better and then it's like I'm I'm like made to feel bad for calling in sick or like it was like annoying that I called in sick. Yeah. Like that makes me not want to call in sick. That happened See, to me once at my at my job. I called in sick for like the first time. Like I, I literally have only called in sick once to my job right now because uh-huh. I called in sick and I was told that I had to call around and find somebody to cover my shift. And yeah. I was like, okay, but I'm sick. <laughs> like, yeah. Honestly, what the fuck? Like I, I get it. But like, I mean, that was the first job I've ever had where they were like, if you're calling in sick, you need to call everybody in the district and see if somebody can take your shift yeah. before you call in sick. So I like did and I was new. So I had to like call every store and was like, hi, can I have the phone number of somebody who's off today so I can call? <laughs> I mean, like yeah. call these people I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then nobody That's could cover my shift. And then I called back and like it was like, <sighs> OK, we'll figure something out, I guess. Drink, like, yeah, drink lots of that. hot water. Drink water. And then that, that was it. So then I was like, fuck, I, like, I felt so bad. Like, I already felt really awful calling in sick because I don't like calling in sick. Mm-hmm. And then to do that, and then I come back, and it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, like, it was really hard on this day because, like, you weren't here. And I'm like, fuck, man. Like, what the hell? The only That's other time I didn't even call in sick, I literally, <laughs> I, like, I was really sick, like, a month ago. I just, like, mm-hmm. threw up. I don't know why. Um, and my anxious Classic ass Danny. was literally on the floor. Yeah. In front of the toilet. I was like, I need to call right now. I need to call and find somebody right now. <laughs> and I yeah. like called one of my coworkers and I was like, can you cover my shift tomorrow? I was like, I, I'm, I'm like sick. I threw up. And she's like, you just threw up. And I was like, yeah, like I'm, I'm, on, I'm like on the floor in front of the toilet. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> she's like, why are you calling? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It's like seven o'clock. It's late. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It just yeah. felt so awful. But, like, that sucks. That shouldn't be a thing. You know? No, it shouldn't. And, yeah, I don't know. I feel like even just the concept, I think, of, like, sick days is a little problematic. Yeah. Um, and the fact that what it, it's normally, like, maybe four or five days a year. I don't have any sick days at my work. Well, there you go. Um, I would say in a normal job. Yeah. Um, you normally get four, I think, four to five paid sick days a year. I think that's four. It was five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, that's, so that's out of 365 days, 
Yeah. You're only allowed to be sick five of those and still not have to worry about your financial stability. Yeah. Um, but when you're working 40-hour work weeks and then you have to go home and you have to take care of all of your other shit. Yeah. Like, you, you don't get enough sleep. <laughs> you don't get enough rest time. You don't get enough time to relax, have time to yourself, do the things that you actually enjoy that make you happy in your life. And I know this kind of sounds kind of, like, fucking sappy and shit, but it actually, like, this, it all goes into mental health. If your mental health is not good, your physical health is not good. Oh, no, of course. Um, whether you believe that or not, guys, <laughs> it's true. Um, and, yeah, so, the, and, and honestly, the whole, I have a lot of feelings about working. <laughs> because even the 40-hour work week. I think it's too much. It, well, it's, it, it was literally, like, a wartime thing. Yeah. Where you, like, you had, or not a wartime thing, sorry. It was made when, you know, you could have a one, one income household. Yeah. Because one person was the income and the other person took care of the things at home. Yeah. And now what it is is you and your partner both need 40 hour work weeks mm -hmm. and you both need to do all your shit at home in order to have a functional and, and comfortable house. And sometimes even that's not enough. Sometimes yeah. you have to have two jobs. Sometimes you have to have three. Well, and the thing, and the other thing I fucked. like hate is like to me it seems like at work the things that you have to do and your priorities outside of work aren't important yes like work is the only thing that's important and like i get it you know leave your shit at the door don't get me wrong i get that but yeah. like one thing i so i don't work weekends anymore and mm -hmm. i stopped working weekends to do school because i was doing my school online and like weekends at my work are insane like they're literally insane and right now like i'm getting shit from some people at work for not working weekends because they're like well like weekends are the busiest it's not fair and i'm like yeah okay well think about like it this i way. don't exist to work for your company not yeah not only that i'm also doing a podcast which is a lot of work a guys. lot of work like it's it's hours of editing and recording like you're listening to like an hour-long episode like it probably takes us about like two hours to record and then it's going to take me about four hours to edit and then yeah. you know like uploading and doing the youtube and like all this shit and it's then a lot of your, work and then if it's your episode then too that week you're doing at least six hours of research at yeah. least and that's like a that's like a small amount of research like my tiny ass story today was probably about eight hours of research yeah and this was a short one and we're not saying that we don't want to, like, we're not saying that we don't want to do it. No, no, We're no. saying that these are our priorities yeah, that we are, enjoy this and this is what we care about. To me. And this but is something that I, I do outside of work that takes time and I'm not going to sacrifice. The things like, that you care about. The things that I care about. And you should For a job to. that I don't really care about, in all honesty. Like, yeah. and and I like shouldn't the say fact I don't care about my job, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a yeah. career for me. Well, and it's like, I don't fucking care if you got goddamn oat milk or almond milk yeah. in your latte <laughs> yeah um wow we this, really is, got a, this is quite I'm, the episode you know what i'm impressed yeah i'm not even mad i just remember when we said that like <laughs> we need to know the why we need to know the why about the words that we're talking about in sentences unrelated to what we are going to be talking about five minutes from now yes so we're we all over the, the place why behind everything. the why is behind everything um, <laughs> we should do a segment called the whys. The whys. <laughs> the whys. The whys. Uh, the whys. The whys. Oh, I saw Why this. Does, There's a new trend on TikTok that's called, mm -hmm. like, Dumbass December or something like that. Same. Uh, and it's just people being like, you're just saying things that you should understand, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're, that like, basic things that, like, one would understand, but, like, I don't understand how it works. You know? Yes, that sounds fun. <laughs> I think I will watch that tonight. They're pretty good. They're really funny. Really <laughs> All right, guys. I think we are going to do a happy. Yeah. And maybe chat about Christmas a teeny bit. And then I think we're going to we're gonna sign out. We've given Danny a fuckload to edit out. So. Oh, I have my happy. Mm. It was, it's with Jade. We, mm. so... It was her birthday last week, and... Happy birthday, yeah. Jade. You should share your profile picture again to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> um, for reference, for those of you who don't understand that, when Sage was very, very drunk the first time she met Jade, she thought she was so beautiful that she shared her Facebook grad photo on her <laughs> Facebook. Like, just with no context. Just shared Jade's Women support picture. women! <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. She felt the need to post it on Facebook. She's a beautiful girl. Also, they weren't even friends on Facebook. No, we didn't even know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this is a lesson in, in upping your privacy um, settings Jade. on your Facebook account. So, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so we were going to go to the Van Dusen Garden, like the light, Christmas light oh, thing. But yeah. it's closed. Yes. Because uh, of COVID. So, COVID. there's like this big Christmas store in, I think it was in Surrey or Langley or something called Potter's. Um, they just have like a bunch oh, of Christmas yes. shit. So we went out there to Potter's. Oh, how was it? It was good. It was. Good, never I've never been. Um, it was fun. I've never been, but I've heard of it. I've I got really cool um, I got a really funny gift for my grandpa for Christmas. Oh, um, nice. It's called what is it called? Oh, are you it's called the, the Freeloader. Yeah, he's not gonna listen, and my, nobody in my family <gasps> will listen before Christmas. Um, it's called the Freeloader fork, <gasps> and it's like an extendable fork. <laughs> and I just I I solely got it. Because my grandpa's kind of an asshole, and I know he's gonna fucking love, love it. it. He's gonna yeah, love he it. Is. He's gonna like I, literally use it to bug my grandma all the time. I can see. He's the gonna glee use it when she's cooking. He's gonna oh come God, up behind he is. her. Yeah, <laughs> when she's cooking, and he's gonna take yeah. something with the fucking fork. So I'm excited. She's gonna get so mad. Yeah. Oh my God, I love. <laughs> so that. I got that at Potter's. It was, it was make good. sure you get a video of it. Yes. At some point. That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we went out. We went to Cactus Club and had some. How Some very, and dinner. How very COVID white of us. Scandalous. Oh, I know. Jade's also in my circle. It's fine. Okay. Well, um, I love that. That's yeah. very happy. It was, it was a good time. Mm-hmm. I guess it's my turn. It's your turn. What are you happy about? Oh, God. Happiness is a fleeting emotion. Um, <laughs> what am I happy about? Let me just... Oh, um... No, that's a dumb one. Um... I found the Eve's, um... Turkey roast thing. And it looks much better than the Tofurky one. <gasps> oh, you want to know what I got? I'm so excited to try it, it. Did you get... Oh my god, no. Don't tell me you got the one with the pastry on the outside. Yeah, I got the field roast one. Oh! I was... I wanted it so I bad. I, I went to... So, like, a month ago, I went yeah. to Whole Foods, and they didn't have it. And they were like, no, you have to come so far in advance. But the vegan supply store had so many. And Jade was down really? there, and she, like, sent me a picture. She was like, do you want it? I was like, yes, please. Oh my god, um, I'm I, so, so I had two, jealous. So I found... Uh, the field roast one was the one I wanted, because it's, like it has like cranberry and stuffing yeah. and everything um but then also you know the brand soul S- yeah. sol they also have one so oh, i had really? already bought the Saul one because they, they had that one yeah. at whole foods and i was like whatever i'll just try it and i was like mm-hmm. i want the field roast one but i guess i'll try this I'm one i'm so um, tell me how it is so i have both i will i'm actually so livid and jealous right now <laughs> i'm gonna see it still keep an eye out for it and if i find it i'll, I'll buy it and oh yeah i'll just eat these for apparently fun. My friend was saying, so my friend Lynn told me yeah. about it, and apparently they sell it, like, in the hot food area at Whole Foods, like, by the slice. Like, oh. you can just buy a slice oh, of it. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently. She said that's where she tried it. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I heard that the, because you can get, like, from the Very Good Butchers, is like, the Beast or whatever. It's, like, 40 bucks. Mm-hmm. I heard that it's shit. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, good. I, I was going to buy it. Yeah, oh, I was going to get it last year, and apparently it's really not Yeah, good. the, what is it called? The Roast Beast or something like that? Yeah, something oh, like that. Oh, thank God. Yeah, because yeah. I was at Whole Foods, and it was the Saul one and that one, and I was, like, yeah. picking it up, and I was like, this is heavy. <laughs> I was yeah. like, there's some and girth it's, it's in like this. it's, like, $40. Yeah, it's so, and then I saw the price, and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I was yeah. like, I'm not paying 40 I wouldn't even, no. Yeah, no, but I've heard that it's really dry and tastes like cardboard. Oh, good. Their words. Yeah. Good. Um, fuck, I still need to do a happy. Oh, your happy was that you got the St. Knives, wasn't it? Yeah, but I said that was oh. dumb. Isn't that dumb? I don't think so. Mm. I have a happy... I actually remember my happy now, but you can have it if you want. Okay. Netflix is coming out, a docu- uh, coming out with a documentary <gasps> on the 13th about Ramirez. Yeah. Mm. Oh, no, that's not oh. what I thought you were going to say. Netflix is also coming out with a new documentary about um, our boy, Cannibal Sex Slaves. Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, so the they're three, doing Ramirez three and Dahmer. Yes. The Ramirez one, I, I think, heard. is like is like a couple. It's like a two hour, like just one. Oh, thank it's, God. I don't I'm think it's a show. So it's just like a documentary. Shows. Yeah. I'm so sick of them. Oh, I didn't know they were doing Dahmer. Yes, I heard that. It's not confirmed. Oh, cool. But I heard it. Oh, I know. okay. I'm so the Ramirez sick. one, they already have the trailer out. 
Yeah. Well, this one, this one is apparently it's from the victim perspective. Oh, shit. Yeah. So Wild. that's really exciting. Okay, so you know where I saw this? What? Um, What is it called? It's called Night Stalker, Stalin. The Hunt for a Serial Killer. Okay. Um, yeah, it comes out January 13th. That sounds, I'm excited. Um, so this girl in X posted, like, mm-hmm. and she was like, I think it was an X, but she was like, yeah, does anybody have any crazy stories? Like, my mom used to be prison pen pals with him. Uh, yeah, uh, like, dead ass. Oh, my God. What the fuck? <laughs> right? I right? don't want to have a conversation with that. I know. Person. I know. What the fuck? Yeah, that's that was wild. like the first thing I saw in my newsfeed. I was like, what the hell? I was like, okay. Oh, damn. Um, when we do Picton, I've got some personal stories about Picton. Don't you worry. Um, so, yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Um, where where can we where can we be found? Where can, where can we find we, us? Where, 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 where? Um, you can find us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Boom. Spotify, Boom. Pocket Cast, Anchor, Boom. Google Boom. Podcasts. Boom overcast undercast i don't know um the first three instagram. of the most important instagram <laughs> silence of the hags at gmail.com silence of the hags everywhere honestly just put it in the google machine and yeah. just do whatever comes up yes. do it all we're the only hags that are silent so not super silent not super silent but we're not the only ones that you can google so that's True. cool that's pretty cool um i think we chose a unique name because you literally nothing else comes up yeah so. not gonna lie kind of a flex <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody thanks so much for tuning in make sure you like comment and subscribe um, smash that like button <laughs> smash that five star that button who says that? uh jojo siwa uh, i think is it her i thought it was it a- isn't it pewdiepie who says that there's a fucking YouTuber who says that. He says it, too. I think a lot of people say uh. it. I, I, maybe he was the OG, though. No, th- maybe? I don't know. I feel like I should know that. Well, smash it. Watch. All around, it. smash. Whatever you're doing, fucking smash it. Smash. Smash. Smash, smash, smash. Smash. Okay, bangers <laughs> and smash. Um, <laughs> everyone, goodbye. Goodbye.